So today we've got a little tutorial and it's all about finding different ways that you can get creative with your photography just using one small light. To go along with that, our friends at LoomCube have sent us over one of their new LoomCube 2.0 portable photography lights. So we can try this light out with our tutorial. So let's get started. So one of the first ways that we can use our little portable light is to actually kind of make use of it as a selfie light. It seems a little bit odd when a lot of smartphones already have a light facing forwards, but as you'll know, being a photography students, the better quality light that you can get, the better the resulting image. So what I'm actually gonna try and do is show you that as an example by taking one shot just straight away on my phone without any extra lighting, and then one using this little Loom Cube light just to show you the difference in the effect. So you can see straight away, I'll put these pictures up on screen for you to have a look at. We've got two shots. One, you can kind of see it's a little bit more flat and that's just having these two side lights here illuminating me. Um, but then actually adding in that small portable light, it makes it much more rounded. I've got a little bit more shadow in the way of details underneath my chin. And it just separates me from the background a little bit more. So it's gonna kind of make your portraits or whatever you're actually photographing pop a little bit more, uh, just using it as like a selfie light. So the, normally the disadvantage of having a small light is that it would produce hard shadows. Um, as you know, bigger lights in, against relatively smaller subjects produce softer light, which is a lot bit more flattering, say for portraits, um, and certainly for landscapes as well. But in the instance of using a small light, this is where our little loom cube light can actually come in quite useful. It becomes, it actually comes along with a little softer fuser panel that you just kind of clip to the front, really simply like that and it can transform your subject from having those harsh shadows to something a little bit more softer and rounded so i'm going to try this out kind of with and without the diffuser um, on a little shot i think i may use a, a book or a plant just to show you the differences between the two Now there's also no reason why you couldn't use a small light to create a bit of mood lighting either. If you've completed uh, low-key modules in our iPhotography courses or had a look at our low-key blogs before, you'll know how to create it. So all you need to really use is a small light source, turn off all of that and block out all of the kind of forms of ambient light around you as well. And it's just a case of moving the light around and positioning it so you get shadows potentially on one side of your subject and light on the other side. So it kind of casts those shadows in an area to make it look a little bit more ominous a little bit more moody. There's quite a few different ways of playing with it. You could potentially bring it behind you and create a bit of a silhouette in effect as well, if it can kind of show you. So if we shine it more on towards the backdrop, it just creates a bit of a silhouette outline of my body. Or if I bring it back round, you can get something that's a little bit more evenly lit. Bring it above and maybe just behind my, over the top of my head, you see it just kind of fills in the eyes and around the mouth in those kind of shadow areas, making it look a little bit more kind of creepy. Same again, if you want to do a bit of a Halloween effect, you can kind of bring it underneath you as well and just give a very, very unflattering finish. But again, it looks really, really cool. So the problem with only having one light source when you're out photographing is that it can, if that light source is a little bit hard, leave you with some shadow areas that you don't actually want. This is normally where you maybe use a fill light or something in the way of like a reflector to otherwise bounce the light back in. But as you can see, reflectors can be a little bit large, a little bit cumbersome. They're not easy to carry around always. So this is where using something like a small light could act as a fill-in light for us on the opposite side of our subject. I'll show you what I mean a little bit more clearly now. If I turn off this light that was just illuminating me there, you can see all the lights pouring in across the frame here and it leaves us with a lot of shadows, as you can see on the table and obviously on the, the darker sides here of this plant. Now, if otherwise use our little small light, you can see how much difference it would actually make. 
So it balances out the light that's coming in from this side and leaving us with shadows here. You're effectively getting two lights and really you're only paying for one of them if you're using sunlight. So it's a lot easier to use than actually going out buying big studio lights or having other flashes. It's a lot more portable, a lot more mobile, and you can see the effects that it actually has. So there is also another way that you can combine your small light in with something that you may already own. So this is one of our iPhotography light tents. And we've just used it for a bit of product photography. If you've taken our home projects course before, you'll know all about product photography and how to make some money from your camera. So this is a nice way of combining a small light. Okay, so I hope those are really helpful tips to give you just a few ideas as what you could actually do with a small light in your photography. So we also just again want to say thank you very much to LoomCube for sending us along with the cool little portable light kit. If you want to find a little bit more information about them, we've got some links just down below this video. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you soon.